And that's why I can't be queen of just Oridon. I have to be queen of the Isle, too. We love you, Mal, but we have something to confess. We don't think you should be the queen of both Oridon and the Isle. Clearly, you're what Oridon needs. You and Ben help change Oridon for the better, and the world loves you for it. But Uma has what it takes to be a ruler too, and she should have become the queen of the Isle at the end of Descendants 3. Ben and Mal are taking Oridon by storm, and it'll never be the same again. But that isn't exactly a bad thing. Uma and Mal both have what it takes to lead a nation, but unfortunately for Uma, the Isle of the Lost slipped through her fingers. Keep watching to find out why Uma truly deserve to be crowned Queen of the Isle. The Isle is my home. Someone needs to be there to protect it. Mal is the queen that Oridon needed. She changed things for the better, but risked her morals in the process. At the end of D3, Mal tells her future kingdom that she can't be their queen. She tells them that she can't turn her back on the Isle. And that's why I can't be queen of just Oridon. I have to be queen of the Isle. Her touching speech leads to the barrier being taken down and turns her into the queen of not one, but two different kingdoms. We love how Mal had a change of heart and did what was right for everyone, but it did take her a long time to make the right decision. Uma, on the other hand, has always done what was best for her people and not herself. Before we reveal why Uma is the Isle's rightful queen, let's tackle the many reasons why Mal should have given Uma the title. When Mal and Ben found out that Maleficent's scepter and the queen's crown had been stolen from the museum, they automatically blamed the VKs. Belle asked Mal what she thought they should do, and Mal confessed that there was only one way to keep evil out of Oridon. I think that we have to close the barrier forever. Instead of fighting for her people, Mal pulled the plug without checking her facts. She was ready to condemn the people of the Isle to a lifetime of imprisonment, which isn't something a queen would do. Mal didn't fight for the Isle. She didn't ask for more time to think. Instead, she suggested the barrier be closed down for good. And just when we thought things couldn't get any worse, Mal lied to her best friends. She told Evie that Ben and his parents were thinking of closing down the barrier forever when in reality, it was her idea. Mal even lied to Squeaky, Squirmy, Celia, and Dizzy, telling them that they could go back to visit their parents whenever they wanted, when she knew full well that they could never go back. As the future Queen of Oridon, Mal had the opportunity to fight for the Isle and be heard, but instead she chose to protect the people of Oridon and turned her back on her hometown. Mal even promised to free everyone on the aisle to get Uma and her pirates to help her save Oridon from Audrey. You can take the girl out of the aisle, but you can't take the aisle out of the girl. If there's one person who has never stopped fighting for the aisle, it's Uma. The sea witch escaped from the aisle at the end of Descendants 2, but she never turned her back on it. Instead, she tried to find ways to free her people. Uma circled the barrier on VK Day, waiting for the perfect moment to strike. Once the barrier was closed, Uma stole Hades' ember from Mal and used it as a bargaining chip. Guarantee me that every single villain kid who wants to can get off the aisle. She offered to help the VK save Oridon in exchange for the aisle's freedom. This is a job for pirates. <laughs> <laughs> We can always go back to hating each other when this is over. And Mal agreed. Working with your enemy isn't easy, but Uma was willing to put their differences aside to save her people. No one was more disappointed than Uma when Mal revealed her web of lies. Uma and Hook left Mal to fend for herself, but Uma just couldn't bear to see Mal and Celia get hurt. So she swallowed her pride and helped Mal save Oridon, knowing full well that she'd be stuck on the aisle. Uma chose to help Mal save Oridon despite having been lied to and manipulated. But what's even more impressive is that Uma chose to go back to the aisle once all was said and done. Although she could have run for the hills and left the aisle behind, Uma knew that the VKs needed a ruler. The Isle is my home. Someone needs to be there to protect it. She went back because she knew that the kids needed her. She sacrificed everything for her people, and it didn't go unnoticed. 
When Mal finally made the decision to bring down the barrier, we saw a beautifully dressed Uma standing on a podium, and it looked like Uma had already become the queen of the aisle. So we felt super bad for her when Mal claimed the title for herself. But Uma wasn't about to fight for the crown because she's not a selfish person. Uma was super happy to see her people walk free. She knew they'd have more opportunities than ever before. So she wasn't about to throw everything out the window for a crown. Is it just us or does Uma have what it takes to be a wonderful ruler? It would have been nice to see Uma, Ben, and Mal ruling side by side. But we're sure Mal will involve Uma when it comes to making decisions for the aisle. Or at least we hope so. So who do you think should be the queen of the aisle, Mal or Uma? Sound off in the comments. Hit that subscribe button and give this video a big thumbs up. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you next time on The Things.